guys, Waterfaller41 here, and in today's video, we're gonna be replacing my light bar switch panel with a new switch panel. So I really did like the switch panel that I had in my truck. There's only two issues that I really had with it. One, you were limited to four lights. So originally I thought, yeah, you know what? I, I don't think I'm gonna have more than four lights on the truck. The fact is I'm headed down the path of having more than that. So I needed to upsize the switch panel that I have. It was kind of expensive to go with the six. So I went ahead with a different option. The other, and I think the worst issue with that light controller is the backlighting is not constant. And what do I mean by when I say that? So when you would turn on the light with that switch panel, the light, the backlighting, the blue backlighting would come on for a couple seconds. And then after a while it would shut off and it does that to conserve the battery on the wireless controller. I know on the six switch, option you could run a pot you could run a uh, constant power into that switch so it has backlighting all the time but on the four switch option that i had um you would hit the switch and then the lights would come on for a few seconds and then shut off that was getting really irritating especially with how dark it's getting now and earlier where i'd turn on a light and then the backlighting would turn off i'd forget that the light's on and then all of a sudden i'd be blinding everyone so i went ahead and picked up the aux beam eight gang uh, multi-function switch panel. So I have two of them here. I have their standard switch panel and then I have their new RGB switch panel. So we'll talk about this one in a second. This is the standard one. I purchased this one a few weeks ago. I was hell bent on installing this one and I actually already installed the brain or the, the control inside the, uh, the engine bay of the truck. And then shortly after I bought this guy, Oxbeam came out with the RGB switch panel. So the RGB switch panel looks almost identical, or look, it does, it looks identical to the standard switch. However, there's a couple different options that this guy has that the original standard switch doesn't have. Both of them are both eight gang, they're customizable, and this, each circuit is the same amperage. I think it's 30, 30, 20, 20, 10, 10, 5, 5 maybe. Um, we'll go over that in a second. But they have the same amperage, they have the same functionality, you hit the button, it'll turn the light on, you hit the button again, it turns the light off. However, there's a few additional benefits that this panel has that this one does not, which is why I made uh, the choice to go ahead and pick up this guy, and I'm just gonna go ahead and return this guy to Amazon. So again, they look the same, super awesome, nice and slim. They look a lot like the, uh, the Switch Pro S-Pods and all that stuff. Um, so from a compact standpoint, it, you're gonna have a lot of options as to installing this. The only drawback compared to the existing Switch I have is I'm gonna have to run a wire to that. But again, the reason I have to run a wire is because I wanted that backlighting. And these both of these switch panels will give me that backlighting option. Now, the benefit of this switch panel over the traditional one is two things. One, you could change the backlighting color. So I know they show four colors here, but with a Bluetooth app and your phone, you can control what the backlighting color is on this, which means when you install it in your truck or whatever you're installing the switch panel in, you can match the interior lights, which for me is a huge deal because I really want this thing to look nice. I don't want to look gaudy. The backlighting on the existing switch panel that I had in the truck was blue and it just kind of looked like crap after a while. The red interior, the white lights and everything, I want everything to match nicely. With this switch panel, I'm gonna be able to match that. So I can go with red or I can go white or any color in between. The other option that this switch panel has that the traditional one does not is you can control the functionality of these lights. So I could tell this to do three things. One, I could have it where I press it, light turns on, press it again, light turns off. I could have, I could set it up where if I push the button, the light will turn on, but the second I let go of the button, it'll turn off. And then the third, if I hit the button, it could turn it on to strobe mode, which is something that I had on my existing switch panel. However, I can only do that through the phone option. Now with this panel, I'll be able to do that on here. Again, you could set all this up on your phone and then you could tell each of these things what to do. So I could tell this one to be a momentary, I could tell this one just to be a single throw and this one could be a strobe, it could be all over the place. So you could set up all your light bars on one side, then you could set up strobes or amber strobes for the construction side on the other side. So if you're driving and you need to hit them, it could turn on the strobe and that circuit is controlled by the brain and it'll tell it when to turn on and off. So again, RGB functionality, as well as the ability to change how each of these switches operates. This is super awesome. Totally worth the money. I think it is 250, 260 ish. Um, and that one's in the 125, 140 range. I forget what it is. I bought that one so long ago. But again, I'm gonna return that one. We're gonna go ahead and install this one. So let's talk about where I'm gonna install this guy in the truck. All right, so my original switch panel, I had it installed over here. 
It was nice up and out of the way, easily accessible here. However, because this one's just a tad wider, it doesn't fit in there. So what I think I'm gonna do is go ahead and install that guy right about here. It's still within arm's reach and I could hit the buttons. I could see everything nicely, but um, you know, we're gonna be able to mount it there and it's up and out of the way. I thought about mounting over here, it just doesn't look that good. So we're gonna mount it down there unless I find a better option when I go to install it. Now, as far as running this wire, obviously we gotta run the wire into the cat into the engine bay to attach to the brain of the light bar controller. But one of the things that we need to do is if we're gonna install the, the switch here, we need to get that wire from here over to underneath the dash, which means to do it the right way and the cleanest way, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this whole center console out. It's super easy to do, especially if you don't have the CD player. So what I'm gonna do is pull this out. I'm not gonna pull it completely out of the truck, at least I don't think, but I'm gonna pull it out just enough that I could get um, a drill back in here and maybe drill a hole up underneath so then I could route the wire down and then pull the wire through so that I'm coming out on the underside of the steering column so then I can get everything to where I need it to go. But ultimately, switch panel is gonna go here. I'm gonna run the wire down. You might see a little bit of it. Then maybe drill a, a, kind of a discreet wire or a discreet hole somewhere underneath here where you won't see it. And then run the wire over to the rubber grommet, run it into the engine bay, then we're good to go. So let's go ahead and get this guy out. Let's turn the light back on. Let's go ahead and get this guy out and it's super simple. Let me hop out of here real quick. So the first thing we're gonna do is pull out this little plastic trim. There's one on each side. Then we're gonna pry this little square opening or cover off. Underneath there, there's a bolt. Underneath here, there's a bolt as well. Once you undo that bolt and that bolt, the whole center console just simply slides straight back. So it's very easy to do. So again, remove this panel, remove the square cover down on the bottom, remove the bolt there, remove the bolt here. I suspect they're either seven, eight or 10 millimeters, which is the typical interior bolt size. And then the whole center console will pull straight back. Now, if you do want to unplug it, there's going to be the harness right up behind the USBs. You're going to unplug it there. That way you can pull everything straight out. And who knows, we might pull it completely out. Might not. It depends on how much access I have to drill a hole to run that wire. But the first thing we're going to do for the switch panel install is figure out where this guy's going to live, drill our hole, get it mounted, get everything reinstalled, and then I'll work on running the wires to the rest of the truck. Okay, totally lied. So there were, well, let's go up to the front there. So there were two bolts. So you had one right up underneath here, and then you had one down below in that little square that you end up uh, removing. So there's a square hole right there, and that bolt was in there as a 10 millimeter. Then there's one right up about there. But there's also one in the rear. So another little square access panel, and then there's a 10 millimeter bolt underneath there that that um, gives you access to. So once I undo that one, then I should be able to pull the whole center console straight back. So there's one on each side, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I have the center console ready to go, but I suppose before I dive into how I'm installing my switch panel, let's talk about the options you get in the kit. So you get two brackets in the aux beam kit with both of the lighting controllers, the RGB one, as well as the normal one. So the first one you get is kind of a pivot mount. So you could mount this bracket. So this side mounts to your dash or whatever surface you're mounting on. And then this little four screw hole side of it would mount to the back of the controller. So here's the back of the standard one and you see it drops right down on there and those holes all line up. So then that gives you some flexibility so you can mount it this way, you mount it at a right angle or a almost 85 degree angle. You got some flexibility with this guy, but again, this is for drilling this guy into a surface and then you'd mount your switch controller to the actual front panel. The other option you have is this little bar. So this bar is so you can flush mount the switch panel so this would mount right on the back of the switch panel like that. Then what you do is you cut out a hole that's the same width and dimension as a controller. Then you just basically screw this to the back side of it. So then all you see is the front of the switch controller protruding through whatever cutout you made. Now that takes some precision and it takes a really nice clean cut. So we're not gonna do that option. Though that would look nice and maybe that's in the future. But for the sake of this install, we are gonna use some iPass, some of, some of that really thick dual lock Velcro, and then I'll show you what we're gonna do. Whoop. So I have blue tape there so you can see it, but that switch panel is going to mount right there. All right, looks pretty good. And then I thought about, oh, there goes my light. I thought about running my wires down through here and then drilling a hole up underneath, but 
that's a lot of wire hanging out. And if I'm gonna do this, I wanna do it right. So what I'm gonna do is drill a hole right here. This part is replaceable. So I'm gonna drill a hole right there. That will allow me to push the wires right through the back of the center console. And then, let me show you. So drill a hole here and those wires will pop out somewhere behind here and I'll show you. But basically, once I drill that hole here, we're gonna have really clean access to drop that cable in there. Then I hook up the extension, get it over underneath the steering column and we're good to go. But I honestly, I think that's gonna be a nice clean look. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the Velcro and how thick it is. I do like that the Velcro does stick very well and it holds things in place, but it is pretty thick. So it might be a little bit of a gap there. So I might go back in with some different Velcro later on, but for the time being, I'm just gonna drill that hole, then use Velcro to stick to the black side of this stuff. And then um, that's how I'm gonna mount the switch panel. That should be plenty for my application. So let me go ahead and get a half inch drill bit, drill this hole, and then there's no turning back at this point. Install the switch panel, get the cable run, and go ahead and reinstall this. But again, the center console, so you got a screw up there, a bolt up there, bolt on the bottom on each side, and then a bolt on the bottom on the back of it. And then this whole thing just pulls right out. You saw I just did it with one hand. All right, so our hole is drilled. So I think I ended up going a little over a half inch, so maybe a 5 eighths inch hole here. Um, that way I could fit the connection end or the, what is this, maybe the female end of the aux beam light controller wire. So this plugs into the other end of it, which is on this long cable. So it's gonna plug into this connector and it's a twist lock. So basically these two ends go together, you twist them and you're good to go. You got a little bit of a whip. So what I'm gonna do now is fish the wire through here. It'll pop out on the other side of this dash. This is all plastic back here. So this is super easy to drill. Man, dog hair everywhere. Um, gonna pop that wire through here. Gonna get my switch panel Velcroed up on here. And then I'm gonna connect the long wire and try to figure out what's the best routing to get it up underneath the dash. I don't want it to get pinched when I put the whole center console back up against the dash. So I'm gonna kinda of slowly guide it through, zip tie it up where I need to. Because this is a plastic connection here, um, I might throw some tape around there um, just to make sure that if it does bump something, it's not gonna rattle on plastic on plastic. So put some electric tape on there just to keep everything cinched down. So, got the hole drilled. Let me pop in the switch panel here, Velcro it up against the little panel here, and then start running the wire and get everything cinched up. I thought this was gonna take a few days to do, but since I already have the brain installed underneath the engine compartment or in the engine compartment, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and run the wire into the cab or into the engine bay and try to knock this one out tonight. Okay, so I got the hole run and I got the wire push through the hole. Again, the real thing that you wanna get through is that collar because that's what screws onto here and makes your final connection. I have this loosely in there. I'm not gonna Velcro this until I get the center console up against the truck because I wanna see how high I could put that up. Um, and again, I don't want it to, I don't wanna land it in the wrong spot before I have a chance to sit in the driver's seat and kinda of see where that switch figures out. So next thing I'm gonna do now is figure out, I'm gonna connect the, the extension wire to this guy and then figure out what wire run I need to do in order to make sure that this guy ends up underneath the steering column. Okay, so I went ahead and started running the wiring and I found a few things. So one, there's a hole on the side, on the driver's side of the center console that leaves you plenty of room to pop the back of the cable for your switch through. So we're gonna run it that way. We're gonna tuck it up behind a dash somewhere over there. Then I went ahead and ran the rest of the wire through the firewall. So if you look underneath here, so underneath the dash, you see this big gasket here. So here's the steering column, and then here is a big gasket. This is the access between the cab and the engine bay for that cable that if you pull it, you can flat tow your truck. So it's a really soft gasket. So what I had, what I went ahead and did is use my kebab stick again and taped the wire to that and poked a hole through there and then pulled the wire from the cab into, or from the engine bay into the cab. That way I could pull just enough wire that I need here attach it to my switch, get everything buttoned up on the inside, and then I can make my final uh, butt connections in the engine bay. So let's go in the engine bay real quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So that wire pops up, where'd it go? Right here. So we're gonna make butt connections on this guy and then he is gonna connect to the other side of here and then that ultimately connects into the brain. So the brain is good to go with everything. And we'll talk about wiring in a few minutes here. 
but this is where the switch connects to and this is where your ignition source connects to and these are all the powers for your lights you got the power for the panel and then you got the ground for the panel i'm going to use some zip ties to clear everything up out of the way so it's a little bit cleaner but we'll review that in a second i want to get this wire run and connected back into the rest of his family here and then get everything cleaned up in the cab so then we could just focus on right here okay so i have the center console pushed all the way forward and we got our wires run here Let me turn off my headlamp okay so you can see this black wire here with the fabric or the plastic fabric uh, loom around it that is our switch controller i added some extra stuff on there just around the that twist connection that way that plastic's not rattling off everything if anything it's going to hit this fabric stuff so then i have that zip tied up here to the harness for the door chime and then I'm gonna go ahead and close up this access and then just zip tie this wire up underneath here. And then we are good to go to then start working in the engine bay. So I have this pulled as taut as I need it to be. Now the next step is to go into engine bay, make the final connections and close up shop and everything. But as far as everything going on in the cab, everything is done with the exception of the switch is not mounted. Like I said, I wanna do that when I'm sitting in the seat so I have the right angle on it. Um, you know, you could adjust it a little bit with that Velcro and I'm going to make sure it's as high as I could possibly get it while still looking good. So let's get everything zip tied and cleaned up underneath here. Close this back up. This is the little panel underneath the steering column, two seven millimeter bolts and then a couple, um, snaps and this thing pulls right out. So like I said, let me get this stuff closed up here and then we could go make those final connections in the engine bay. And then we are done with the aux beam switch controller. All right. Now that we have everything cleaned up inside the cab and hooked up, we're going to turn our attention to the engine bay. Now I went ahead and already connected the wire here because if you remember, I cut the switch extension wire that goes into the cab so that I could pass it through the firewall. I reconnected that and I routed the wires down through here right next to the battery and then they all come up to the main controller. So let's talk through what's going on in this controller. First and foremost, you have a power. So this power cable comes in the kit for the aux beam controller. And let me show you what they also give you. Now in the kit, they also give you this breaker. So you can hook up this breaker to the battery and then the output side of this guy would go right into the switch here. So right on the power terminal of the switch. However, since I already have that distribution block that I installed for my amp that has two outputs, I just went ahead and used that fuse. That way I have a fuse up ahead of this and then I have these fuses. So basically redundancy on the power supply side, but we're in good shape. So you have your power supply here, you have your negative. So this is going right to the battery cable or battery negative terminal here. Then you have these green blocks here. So these green blocks are the outputs for each of the light circuits. So starting from the right to the left, you have your top four banks and then your bottom four banks. So your top four banks go 30 amp, 30 amp, 20 amp, 20 amp. Then the bottom four banks go 10 amp, 10 amp, 5 amp, 5 amp. So be mindful of the actual amperage that each circuit can handle when you are hooking up your lights. I know my most powerful light bar is my lower light bar grill or lower one in the grill. So that's on a 30 amp uh, circuit as is my ditch lights. So those are also on a 30 amp. But also that puts my two forward lights on the top of the switch panel. And then I have my two, well, one now, one future reverse light on the bottom two. So the bottom two are 10 amp, 10 amp. That's perfectly fine for the pods that I'm gonna be adding there. Um, so power, ground, these are the outputs for our lights. So now after you have this main brain installed, all you need to do is run a positive negative to whatever new lights that you add. It's super easy. That way all the wiring stays here in the cab or in the engine bay, you don't need to do anything inside the cab now that you have that switch wire. So speaking of which, here's our switch wire. It's four wires and it plugs into the switch terminal and then we have our turn on lead. So this turn on lead here is tied into the fuse box, which is just below and it's tied into position F38 with the micro two add a fuse. That way when fuse F position, when fuse position F38 is turned on. So when the truck is in the on position, not accessory, but on, it's going to turn the light panel on. So ignition. So this turns the switch panel on here is your switch wires so when you're hitting the buttons at the actual switch panel in the cab this is what's telling all the relays that are baked in here when to turn on and off you have your power you have your ground both of those go directly to the batteries and then you have all of your circuits for your lights which are all fused so again 30 30 
2020, 10, 10, 5, 5. So power goes through my distribution block into the aux beam main control panel or the brain here. Got a negative ground, got my switch, got my ignition source. Again, fuse position F38. Then I have everything routed down below. Then you have this nice little cap here with some extra fuses in there, a fuse, extra fuses and a fuse puller. That closes down right up on top and you're good to go. So everything's cinched down. So that is the wiring. Again, I ran it through the cable for the that little orange pulley that you pull next to the steering column uh, to if you want to flat tow your truck. Ran it through there to get through the firewall. Then I basically just routed it through along the side of the batteries. And then I had drip loops, so all my batteries come or all my wires come down, and then they drop down with a big loop before they go up into here because you don't want water to run down these wires and then follow it into the brain. You want it to run down to a loop and drip off on the bottom. So I have my ditch lights, my lower light bar, as well as my rear high mount lights connected now. And I'm gonna be installing some rear floodlights here in a few days. So I already have the wire good to go for that one, but it's just not hooked up. So we will close up shop here since everything's done in the engine compartment. And now let's take a look at how that switch panel controls and then how you use your phone to change some of the settings on it. Cause I learned some really cool things about this controller that I didn't know it did. But now that I do, it's that much better of a switch panel and I'm glad I made the upgrade. So let's hop inside the truck and take a look at everything. All right, we are inside the truck. We have the aux beam controller completely installed here. It's a little dark right now, I apologize. But I wanna give you a run through of how well this switch controller acts or operates in and of itself. And then I wanna show you some of the app and because the app has some really cool features that change how the switch works and I really like it. Um, but let's dive into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that our truck is in the run position. Remember we connected the controller to F38, which is a powered circuit only when the truck is in run. Um, if you want it to be on an accessory, go ahead and find a fuse position that's on an accessory, but this works for me. So you can see our switch panel is on. Let's go ahead and hit our pillars and you can see there is absolutely zero delay from hitting the button to turn it on. So we'll do our pillars. That's my lower light bar. You don't really see it up against the garage. And then if you look in the rear, you can see my high mounts. Again, bright in the garage, so you don't really see it. Um, so let's go ahead and pretend like we're gonna open up the app. So we'll open that up. Again, we have our switch powered. Let's go ahead and connect to our switch. So connected, successful, let's go back now. Now we can start messing around with things. So right now I have the switch panel controlled at white or set at white. However, if I wanted to start changing it, I could change it to red, let's see purple, blue, or really any other color I want. So I'm just twisting basically this little color diagram here and that's changing the color to whatever I want it at. So I'm gonna put it back to white and then you could dim it, you could put it wherever you want. So you got really bright or really dim. I was at basically 25%. Next thing you could do is you can go into the icons. So you could set the image of your switch controller here to the actual picture of the light or you could grab the default icons. So this is the same icons that show up on the sticker page for when you're putting these overlays over the each switch. So you could pick whatever one you want here. So I went ahead and did light bar, windshield mount, rear, and then backup. And then, like I said, I don't have backup lights yet, but that is what I'm installing in my next video. So I went ahead and just added those. But if you wanted to use a picture of these, you could go into your photo album and add your own picture, which is pretty neat. And then you could also set the name of each of these things. So if I were to set the name, let's say, let's grab that guy, we'll set the name. We'll just call it sample, hit save. So then it, it gives you the light icon for your sample because you just renamed it. All right, so that is how you name everything in the app itself. Then in mode, this is one of the features that I really do like about this thing. So like I said, you have toggle, momentary, or pulsed. So toggle means if you hit the button once, it's gonna turn the light on, hit the button again, it's gonna turn it off. Momentary means you're gonna hit the button and only if you hold the button will it actually stay on. So let's switch my pillars, since we'll be able to see those, to momentary. So now when I tap it, they just turn on and off. But if I hold it, they stay on. Then the other option you have is pulse. So if you are a construction truck or a volunteer firefighter or whatnot, and you wanna put strobes on your truck, this is where you'd use the pulse mode. So I just changed my ditch mount lights to the pulse mode so we can see what happens, and that's what happens. So it gives you a nice pulse uh, strobe effect on the lights themselves. Let's turn that off. 
put that back to toggle. And then the last thing is one of the features that I did not know that this light controller had, but I absolutely love it. So you could group switches together. So basically I have the ditch lights and I have the lower grill mount. If I want to turn those on as a group with one button, you could group those together. So we could say that guy and that guy. So we tap and select the two switches that we want to tie together. Then we'll hit save and I'll call those my fronts. So that is now in the fronts group. I don't know if you can see really well. So we have the fronts group there. So now let's just get out of that. If I touch either one of the front circuits, so if I touch my ditch lights, it's gonna turn both lights on. If I touch my lower grill switch, it will also turn everything on because you group those two lights together. You could group anywhere from two to eight of the circuits together. So then when you only hit one button, it'll turn them all on. The other thing I like about this switch, so let's turn it off. Let's say I turn all my lights on, right? So I have, right now, four circuits are completely on. Then I hit this button in the middle, it'll turn everything on and off all at once. So this also groups things together. But when I turn the truck on and back, or turn the truck off and back on, it's gonna reset everything. So the grouping feature inside here, using the app to group certain circuits together is awesome. I did not know that this switch would have had it, but I absolutely love that you could do that. And that is something that I think other switches fall short on is being able to group things, especially when you have an app that interfaces with the controller. So again, benefits here. One, you could change the color to any color you want. So in the rub or in yeah, in the rebel, we're gonna want to match the white or we can match the amber. Very easy to do that. So you could basically customize it, or it's RGB, so you can just get the code for whatever color you want, and then you could try to figure out how to get there with the dial here. You could dim it, make it as bright or as dim as you want. You can name each of the switches. You could use the default icons, you could use your own pictures, or you could use whatever name you want. So I use sample here, but on the four existing circuits, I used um, the default icons. Then you could tell each switch individually what kind of action you want it to do. Do you want it to toggle? Do you want it to be momentary or pulsed? Then you could start grouping things together. So if you have a whole bunch of lights on the front that you want to group together as fronts, you could grab all those and throw them in a single group. Then if you want a bunch of rear lights or scenery lights, you could also group all those into one single group. So that is a run through of how the app works. It was super simple to connect to there. All I had to do was turn on the power to the switch by turning the truck into run mode. Then I hit in here, I just hit connect, turn on Bluetooth and we're good to go. Smooth sailing. So that is how you install the aux beam RGB controller. Like I said, this one just came out and I was in the process of installing their conventional controller, which does not have this app interface. It's just your basic controller. You got to buy it in blue, green, or red. When this came out, I knew I wanted this because I wanted the ability to change the colors. And a little surprise after I picked it up was the grouping, which is absolutely awesome because every time I run my pillars, I want to run my lower light bar and this allows me to do it. So. Like I said, that is the installation of the AuxBeam RB, RGB controller. I'll leave all the information for this guy down in the description below. If you have any questions, let me know. What do you think of this? Is this a sweet remote? For less than 300 bucks, this is a no brainer. With the amount of options you have with this guy from an RGB, from grouping, um, this is a very easy decision to make if you are looking for a cost-effective light controller. I know there's a few other really expensive ones out there that look nice as well, but you can't beat this guy. And how it fits in the in the, the Rebel Cab is perfect. All right. Oh, one last thing. So I installed it here. A couple other options. You can install it up here with some of the brackets. You can install it up in your sunglass holder. You can install it wherever you want. I've seen folks install it right here. To me, this makes the most sense. It's up out of the way. You're not going to snag on it. And it's a solid backing on it with the dual lock Velcro. But with that said, that's how you install the Oxbeam RGB controller. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.